Ann Hansen. I'm an extension plant pathologist with Virginia Cooperative Extension. And we're out here today looking at a dieback problem on rhododendron on the 25th of May. And dieback simply means that um, branches are dying from the tip back. In this case, we see just a few branches dying back, a few individual branches. And this is very typical of a disease called Botryosphaeria dieback. It's a fungal disease, so the fungus name is Botryosphaeria, and it will infect uh, branches, individual branches, and cause them to die back. And it's not a very aggressive pathogen, so it mainly attacks plants that are stressed by some other factor, and those factors could be winter injury, um, drought stress, any of a variety of things. So um, one thing that you'll see when you have Botryosphaeria dieback is if you prune these branches out and you look at them in cross section, you'll see a reddish brown discoloration. And that's where the fungus has infected the branch. So you, it's a good idea to prune these branches back, prune them out, and you wanna prune back behind that reddish brown discoloration to where the entire cross section is kind of a creamy white color. The kinds of stresses that can um, predispose plants to this disease are, like I said, winter injury, drought stress. In Blacksburg in 2017, we had a very severe temperature drop in April that followed some unseasonably warm temperatures in late winter. So that could have contributed stress to this plant. Sometimes on woody plants, um, you can see that green branches will turn brown, so that, that can also be evidence of Botryosphaeria. And oftentimes the fungus will produce its fruiting bodies or spore-producing structures on the dead wood. So you'll see these little pimples, and you'll definitely want to prune those branches out because that's where the fungus overwinters. There are many woody plants that are susceptible to this disease, not just rhododendron. It's a good idea to think about preventing this disease for any woody plant that you might want to put in your yard. The first thing to do, of course, is to make sure you're choosing the right plant for the right place. And you'll want to look at the, the characteristics of the environment that that plant needs. So look at things like hardiness zone. What is the correct hardiness zone for that plant? Does it fit where you live? Um, the soil type, the soil pH, the light exposure these types of things. And if you can provide a good environment for the plant, that'll go a long way to preventing this disease. So in the case of my plant, um, probably my plant has a little too much sun exposure. It may have uh, not optimum soil pH. So I can't do a lot about the sun exposure at this point, but I can have a soil test done and see if I can modify the soil pH by acidifying the soil or see if it needs any fertilizer and um, I'll certainly want to pay attention to the weather and prevent drought stress. And I'm definitely gonna prune out these uh, dead branches. I'm gonna cut back to where I see a creamy white color in cross section and remove those branches so I'll remove the inoculum that might be there to cause new infections next year. And when I'm pruning, I'm gonna dip my tools in either rubbing alcohol or a solution of 10% bleach to prevent transmitting the disease on the pruning tools.